from Ukraine that was Chervo Naruta and that is from a long long time ago as you can probably tell by the musical style that was I think going back to somewhere in the 1970s it's from a compilation uh, CD of 200 mp3s I picked up in Ukraine back in uh, 2012 on a road trip somewhere so quite a treasure again that was uh, Chervo Naruta is the name of the group and the song was Oy Marichka Chicheri a song about a gal named Marichka Dobrý den, šanovní rádiu sluchači, ta vítají vás všich na rádiu Peredáču náš holos rádiu Krínského Koríňa. Jaká podjezd je vám sjohodný, tak jak i kožný sredé z 11. do 13. hodiny na chvíli CHLY 101.7 FM u místě na nejmo. Pre mikrofoní sjohodinu je povinná a nastupnou hodinu bude s vámi Oksana. Děkuji, že říšili, pro budu s námi nastupných dvou hodin, my máme dožit si kávě noviny na sjohodnější programy i čudovou ukrajinskou muziku.
Hello there and welcome to Nash Holos Ukrainian Roots Radio, coming to you live today from CHLY 101.7 FM in Nanaimo. I'm Paula demchuk mccory Pukrinska Pavlina, and I'll be your host for this first hour, and Oksana will be here at 12 noon to host the show in Ukrainian. I'm delighted to have you with me. We've got a great program lined up for you in this first hour. We've got Ukrainian Jewish heritage and a look at a very famous a man, a Ukrainian man, who became very famous in North America on the Klezmer music scene. As well, we'll be speaking with Leanne Pocholik of the Vesna Ukrainian Dancers, and she'll be telling us what's coming up in uh, this season, and the registration is uh, coming up next week, I believe. So she'll be giving us all the details on that, uh, it's, if Ukrainian dance is something that uh, you or your kids would like to be part of. So stay tuned for that. We've also got our usual proverb of the week, other items of interest, and great Ukrainian music. Now, uh, just a heads up here, where uh, there is some new um, technical, um, or some new uh, programming features here on the computer in the back end. So um, it's brand new to me. So there might be a few little glitches, so bear with me. Um, it won't take long, though, to get things on track. So... Um, I hope this will work. <laughs> Coming up next is a group from uh, Coventry, England. They are a brand new group. They are called the Kov Cossacks. And they released an EP back in uh, just last November. And here they are now with um, a song. It's kind of a mashup and uh, an original arrangement, certainly, of an old traditional Ukrainian folk song. They call it Tuj Taranta. <laughs> Ти казала понеділок, підем разом по барвінок, я прийшов, тебе нема. Ти казала у вітро, почілуєш разів сорок, я прийшов, тебе нема. Ти ж мене підманула, ти ж мене підвела. Сум розум узвела. Ти ж мене, 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 
Up next, from the Nasholos Audio Archives, Ukrainian Food Flare. Hello! Shashlik is a Caucasian dish which the Ukrainians adopted many centuries ago. It is a great favorite throughout Ukraine, and many Ukrainian restaurants specialize in this choice preparation. Traditionally, it is barbecued skewered meat, and it is served with many variations. While lamb is the most popular meat, a variety of meats is always very popular with Ukrainians. Shashlik is splendid for entertaining or for picnics. Pieces of vegetable can also accompany the meat on a skewer to make a deluxe version. Some cooks do not marinate the meat first, but season the meat just before skewering and brush with oil as the skewers are cooking. Whether cooking outside, which is great, or inside, long flat metal skewers are best. Wooden skewers, if soaked in water for an hour or so, are fine too. If you are broiling, place the skewers on a broiler rack close to the heat. Turn the skewers several times, basting with the oil until the meat is cooked to desired dampness. The skewers can be prepared ahead, covered and kept until ready to cook. For a combination of meats, as Ukrainians prefer, you'll need the following. A half a cup of oil a half a pound of lean salt pork or unsliced smoked bacon, half a pound each of beef filet, veal, pork, and lamb, some ground black pepper, sweet paprika, and salt to taste. Cut the meat into two-inch cubes, thread on skewers, alternating the kinds of meat. Sprinkle with salt, pepper, and paprika. Brush and baste with oil. Grill, turning two or three times until desired doneness. Salt on serving. Garnish with green onions, lemon wedges, and tomatoes. 
Try this one. You'll love it. It's Ukrainian. This has been Ukrainian Food Flare from the Nasholos Audio Archives. From Ukraine, Lviv, to be exact, and they are called Lubistok, and that was Verkhoveno, which translates as the Highlanders' song. Vislukite radio programu nash holos radio krinsko hokorinja na radio stansi CHLY stoideni CM FM umistin naimo hovorit pavina. You're listening to Nash Holos Ukrainian Roots Radio coming to you live on CHLY 101.7 FM in beautiful downtown Nanaimo. I'm your host Pavina. Now, the Vesna Ukrainian dancers have been a fixture in the central Vancouver Island community for oh, 30, over 30 years now. And um, they're still going strong. They will be uh, starting up another season in September, and registration is just around the corner. So I thought we'd bring on uh, one of the um, longstanding members, uh, one of the choreographies, choreographers and dance instructors Leanne Pakolik to tell us all about what's coming up. So Leanne thanks for joining us again. Yeah, thanks for asking me. Now um, tell us um, when the registration is going to be and then I'm going to ask you some questions about what's going on. <laughs> okay um, well, we're having a registration and actually meeting at the same time on the same night. Um, it's going to be on Wednesday September 5th at 6 30. Um, it's going to be at the um, St. Michael's Ukrainian Parish Hall, where we have our um, instruction as well, or our rehearsals. Um, and that's at 4017 Victoria Avenue in Nanaimo here. Okay, so um, that's at 6.30 next Wednesday. Right. And, and uh, so people will just come bring their bring their kids, fill out the forms, and... Just and bring their money. And bring money, <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, so it's not, you know, as activities go for kids, it's not all that expensive. What is, what is it, the, the fee? Um, we range from, depends what level they're going to be in. Oh. Um, we, it ranges from $285 to $345 a year, oh, okay. um, which is relatively cheap. Um, and also we have a costume maintenance fee as well okay. for a dancer. Yeah, okay. And what does that run? 
Um, thirty-five dollars. Okay. All right. So, yeah. so we're talking, you know, for a full year of activities for for kids, um, and adults too, for that matter. I understand that there are adults as yep. well as kids. Yeah. Yeah. So. We are um, we are open to that. Um, there's a minimum of of three. There has to be at least three adults in there to make the you know class at least okay. feasible to do. Um, we've had had that in the last two years or so, but um, I know there's some people that aren't coming back due to, you know, strains on their feet or whatever else, but if more people want to join, by all means, yeah, we will have a, an adult group for sure. Okay, well, you had a, a couple of, um, a couple, the last couple of years, I guess, you had uh, some some of the dancers' moms. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they, they, they loved it, so now... Now the kids can tell their moms what they did wrong so instead of the other way around. They, they were joking about that last year. So, so um, when is rehearsal? Rehearsals, you said, are Wednesday. So what time? No, they're Tuesdays and oh, Wednesdays. Tuesdays. Oh, two, two days. Okay. Yeah, because we can't do all levels every um, in one day. Right. Um, just because we do do them in the evenings. And, you know, us instructors do have other jobs besides this. <laughs> so... Um, so um, Tuesday nights it will be the beginners and the juniors and the adults if there is a group. Okay. And then on Wednesdays we have our intermediate and seniors levels. Okay. And so um, there are uh, obviously, as you mentioned, a couple of different uh, classes going on at the same time. Yeah. Usually the this year we're going to have to see how many people actually you know come back because it changes every year. Mm -hmm. um, we're probably going to have two levels of juniors this year just because there's some that are um, um, kind of more advanced than some of the other ones um, just by how many years they've been dancing. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to have the beginners first thing at like at 5 o'clock or so we're hoping and then the two junior classes we can actually split the hall into two. So we'll be doing that. Okay, so what are the um, then the categories the, of the the ages um, for example? Uh, we don't go by age. Oh, you don't? Um, we, we're, well, we do and we don't. It's a hard, it's a hard thing to go by age mm. um, just because if they uh, we, we have to analyze them as they come in. Okay. Um, we're, we're trying to get out of the age thing. We're kind of doing the instructor's discretion kind of idea. Oh yeah, um, well that's but, fair. You know, yeah. more, more than time, the ages are, they're pretty even. Um, you know, ninety nine percent of the time, mm -hmm. um, there will be some that that aren't, but they're pretty all pretty close in age range of two or three years apart, kind of okay. idea. Yeah, so that doesn't make that much difference if somebody's no. um, you know twelve or, or thirteen or fourteen, right, and they have sure. the same scale, right? So, so but yeah. you you start them really young because you got little little wee ones on stage. Yeah, so cute. <laughs> yeah, we we you know uh, we we try to start them at five, but you know if someone says that I have a four year old, you know we'll we'll take a look and and see um, mm -hmm. if they are you know. They are. They can come and do the stuff, but yeah, so we've had some four-year-olds, and I hear there's some more four-year-olds trying to come this year too. So <laughs> I guess that will be up to Dean what he wants to do with his class. So, right, right. Oh, so, yeah. so Dean is the Dean Andrichuk, who is um, yeah, yeah. The uh, he'll be the beginner instructor okay. for sure. Yeah, yeah. And so the beginners then range from well, I guess four <laughs> four to like yeah like i said it's hard yeah. hard to say sometimes you know four to six probably or four to seven yeah um depending on you know experience and what they can and can't do and yeah. it's, it's just a it's a discretion thing unfortunately but yeah. um that's what? how we have to do it sometimes oh well it makes sense i mean you know this yeah. this is a performing group it, it, so yeah yeah we're not professional by any means you know we we adapt to whatever level anybody is but yeah. uh, but I, i've seen i mean i've seen you on stage a few times and for amateurs you're pretty darn good <laughs> <laughs> well well the kids do very well that, there's no doubt too. Um, they they try their hardest and they have fun and yeah. put a costume on them and things come alive yeah. it seems so yeah so what um what then are the stage like the different uh groupings then um that you have got beginners and and is next juniors yeah um we are like i said we don't know who's coming back but we're probably going to have two different levels of juniors okay sorry some that are um have been here for quite a while and ones that are a little more advanced than beginners mm -hmm. kind of they're kind of in between kind of ideal and you know we kind of want to see what they can do on their own kind of thing you know we, you got to step them up right every every time give them more to do a little harder stuff so that they learn right yeah, so yeah. 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 And then, and after then we have our intermediates and mm -hmm. seniors and then our adults. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, um so you were talking then about uh, like what do they do? How does a class In practice? Yeah, how does a class work? Um 
Well, usually we do a you know like a bar, like a ballet bar, depending on on what level. You know, some are harder, some are less involved. Um, just so that they warm up and they mm-hmm. stretch, and you know, you start giving them the structure on how to where their feet go and where their arms go and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, then there's usually um, it depends on throughout the year it changes, um, but usually uh, you know after the warm ups you, you start doing um, doing steps to perfect them and stuff like that. Um, once they get that down, then we start doing, of course, doing the choreography of the dance. Ah. And sometimes we do corner work across the floor to do steps. Depends. Sometimes it's in the middle of the dance floor. Sometimes it's just, you know, it's just yeah. um, the variation of what dance you're doing and what you want them to do. And, um, yeah. you know, beginners, it's, it's a lot of learning from scratch, right? So cause no one knows what they're, right. what they've even started to do, right? So they got to right. start from scratch from toe heel, one, two, three, and then just one, two, three, whatever. Yeah, so, yeah. Ah. and then the seniors are a little different because they've been there, you know, mm-hmm. usually for years. So you just, you start perfecting them and start maybe teaching them different combinations and mm-hmm. and then uh, or whatever you may need or see in the dance that you're going to do in the future with them. That's kind of how the idea. And then you just start doing the choreography and running the dance and 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 uh, keeping it trying to keep it fresh. So somebody that's a, <laughs> somebody that's a little bit older than uh, that it has never done it before. I guess you would you would adapt your choreography and your instruction to get them up to speed so that they can go and, and perform when it's... Oh, you have for to, sure. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes, you know, it's, it's, it's going to have maybe some one-on-one time. And of course, we, we hope that, you know, they kind of go home and, and practice a few of the steps that they, you know, because yeah. just doing them at practice is not going to help, right? Because sometimes you yeah. forget. Or, yeah. Yeah. So we hope that they go home and do practice certain things like we yeah. ask them to, but, yeah. you know... Well, we hope for the best. Like, like any, uh, like any dance, uh, dance form of dance instruction. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, and I have, I'm, of course, I'm biased because I'm a part of Visna. I've emceed your your year end <laughs> concerts many times, and it's always such a pleasure because it's so fun to see the culmination of a year's work. Because I know you you have other performances throughout the year. You go to seniors' homes and various different uh, yeah, and venues. Yeah, fundraisers that mm-hmm. other groups have and mm-hmm. things like that, for sure. No, yeah, yeah. 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 We're, so, you know, we get asked to do a lot of little different things. Yeah, yeah so so there are opportunities throughout the year. And at the uh, year end, usually it's at VIU um, Malaspina Theater there and a uh, great venue. And it's so fun to see um, the you know, like I said, the culmination of the year's work, but by then they're polished right? because they've been doing these little performances, right? Right, so, oh, for sure. Yeah. That's why we do do them, just so they have practice of yeah. dancing in front of people and yeah. and especially the beginners, because like, they can get, you see they people and sometimes they just go like, oh my God, there's someone watching me and they yeah. just stop, right? Yeah, yeah. Rather, than, <laughs> rather than a hall setting, right, where there's no one watching you but the instructor, right? Sometimes right. they get a little stage fright, so yeah. it's good practice to do little things, that, that, especially the for the seniors they love yeah. love seeing people dance right they yeah. love people coming to their facilities and mm-hmm. seeing whomever to come so yeah yeah they and like to do that a lot and you know i have to really tip my hat to to you and dean and and, and jean uh for the work you do is the little kids i mean they some of them are a little you know i've seen at some of the concerts are a little bit starstruck but they they get you know they give their heads a shake um mentally <laughs> and, and then they get to it and you know for somebody who doesn't isn't a dancer themselves and doesn't know anything really about choreographies you don't really see any you know you you know you and some of the dancers have said oh no we made a mistake but you can't tell because that's showmanship, right? And that's another part, I guess, that you that comes with the instruction is that the show must go on. So you make a misstep, you just carry your, you know, something falls off your head, you know, a piece, you know, some part of your costume falls, you just keep going, right? Yeah, which happens, yeah, which happens. All, yeah, in ver- the best of us, in, it happens to yeah, the best of anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. I have seen that actually with, you know, professional performers, that happens. And uh, yeah, and really every year I've, that I've, uh, seen you um, perform your group perform. It's it's always been just just such a joy. So, um, tell again. Um, hopefully, listeners will be inspired to to join Visna, and uh, it'll be an ex- another exciting year. So, just tell us once again the details of registration. Yeah, registration. Sorry, <laughs> registration and information meeting uh, Wednesday, September fifth at six thirty at the St. Michael's Ukrainian Parish Hall. Um, 4017 Victoria Avenue 
and uh, we'll have all the sheets and stuff like that or if you want them early um i'm not sure if we have them ready or not or if you want more information we're all on facebook as well you can send us a message and someone will reply to any kind of uh, questions you may have as well okay and you don't have do not have uh, it goes without saying you don't have to have any a drop of ukrainian blood in you to be able to join (laughs) and we kind of have also if you want to try it for a couple days um you know of course it's not going to be what the whole class is going to be like because the first couple day couple practices are usually you know just stretching and doing steps and stuff like that there's not going to be any choreography Mm -hmm. being done but you can kind of get an idea of if this is for you or not so we kind of offer if everyone's brand new to come and check it out for a couple practices and then they can make a decision from there as well okay so that's the visna ukrainian dancers that's spelled v as in victor e s like sam and the november a visna ukrainian dancers find them on facebook keep in, uh keep tabs on them there and um if you're inclined to give it a try uh, it's a great workout <laughs> yeah, and then, you know, sometimes you did it as a kid, and mm-hmm. you're an adult now, you want to come back, by all means, come yeah. on back there. I think there's a lady who, who used to do it, and she's thinking of trying to do it this year as well. She wants to come back and, and relive her childhood, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun. So, again, that is uh, week today, uh, Wednesday, September 5th, 6.30 p.m., uh, registration for the Vista Ukrainian Dancers uh, 2018-2019 season and uh, St. Michael's Ukrainian Parish Hall, 4017 Victoria Avenue in Nanaimo. So thanks, Leanne Pocholik, um the dance, one of the dance instructors, Dean Andrichuk, and also I think Jean Rudy is still popping in now and again. Yeah, Jean's still kind of coming part time. Yeah, for sure. Okay. We can't live without her. <laughs> <laughs> so th- three, three fantastic instructors, uh, and always uh, just um, d- deliver a great load of fun. So once again, Leanne, thanks so much for joining us, and uh, I'll break a leg. <laughs> oh, great! Thank you, and uh, hope to see. Anyone new? That would be great to see you guys there. Okay. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Leanne Pokolik, um, the uh, one of the instructors of the Ukrainian uh, Visna Ukrainian dancers uh, here in Nanaimo, and um, just mentioned that um, they I did start out uh, saying that they are a fixture in the central Vancouver Island community. Uh, they've got dancers that come from as far away as Courtney and Camel River. So uh, wherever you are, if you're listening, um, again uh, September fifth. A week today, 6.30 p.m., St. Michael's Ukrainian Parish Hall, 4017 Victoria Avenue, for registration and information.
and that is just an example of one of the um, types of songs that um, y- you will see kids dancing to, and uh, possibly adults as well, though that was called the Children's Kozichok, and it is uh, from a collection of, um, of dance tunes that uh, Leanne has shared with me, and uh, we do this kind of back and forth things. It's a very reciprocal uh, situation. Again, that was a Kozichok for children from the Visna Ukrainian dance repertoire. Vislokite Radio Pratamu Nash Holos Radio Krinsko Hokorinya Na Radio Stansi CHLY Stod and Isim FM Umistin Naimo Hovarich Pavina. You're listening to Nash Holos Ukrainian Roots Radio coming to you live on CHLY 101.7 FM in Nanaimo. I'm your host this hour, Pavlina. Here is um, a song by the Euphoria Band. Uh, they are from Edmonton and uh, from a CD that they just released uh, and launched last month. And here they are with a song called Cherashenka, the Cherry Tree. Шерешеньку на дворі Там не стояв із милою дозорі Черешенька ще й хай! Черешенька прийметься А милая за другими дивиться Черешенька ще й хай! Черешенька прийметься А милая за другими дивиться Ой, ходив він із милою лісочок, Виплітав її з фіалок ночок. А тепер куди піду, Лиші з верби лис найду, І ще її я любити не буду. А тепер куди піду, Лиші з верби лис найду, І ще її я любити не буду. Сизий сокіл літає Вже три рочки, як милої, немає Ой, дівчино, перебач Я смівся, а де плач Як постелиш, так ся виспиш, говорять Ой, дівчино, перебач Я смівся, а де плач Як постелиш, так ся виспиш, говорять Я сміюся, а ти плач, як постелиш, так ся виспиш, говорять. Ой, дівчино, перебач, я сміюся, а ти плач, як постелиш, так ся виспиш, говорять. Як постелиш, так ся виспиш, говорять. And now for a look at Ukraine's rich Jewish heritage, then and now. Brought to you by the Ukrainian Jewish Encounter, based in Toronto, Ontario. Dave Terrace, the King of Klezmer, by Yale Strom, 
chronicles the life and work of a Ukrainian-born man who became known as the Benny Goodman of Klezmer. He was the individual most responsible for the development of a uniquely American style of Jewish klezmer music. From 1925 until his death in 1989, Dave Terrace set the standard. Well-known jazz legends such as Charlie Parker and Miles Davis studied his technique. Yale Strom is himself an accomplished klezmer musician and historian. He is credited as a pioneer in the revival of klezmer. Strom had already published several books on the genre when, by happenstance, he ran into a great-grandson of Dave Terrace in New York. That encounter inspired Strom to write a biography of the iconic musician. The book contains many touching anecdotes by family members, musical colleagues, and protégés. There is newly discovered biographical material, rare photos, the musical scores of 28 of Terrace's original klezmer tunes arranged for violin and clarinet, a glossary of Yiddish terms, a bibliography, detailed footnotes, and discography, plus a copy of a handwritten note by Terrace a few years before he passed away. Dave Terrace was born Dave Tarasiuk in 1897 in Ternivka, a shtetl in what is now modern-day Ukraine, located about 200 miles south of Kiev and 19 miles southwest of Uman, where Rebbe Nachman of Breslov is buried. Terrace was a third-generation klezmer musician. He learned his craft from his father and played at weddings for Jews and non-Jews in and around Ternivka. He even played in the Tsarist army up to World War I. That gig not only kept him out of the trenches, in the end it saved his life. When pogroms broke out, foreshadowing even worse devastation and horror to come with the Holocaust, Terrace managed to escape to the West with his wife and some family members. Sadly, many of his relatives were left behind. Those that survived endured much hardship, including deportation to Uzbekistan through Siberia and Kazakhstan. Life was hard for klezmer musicians in the USSR, and often dangerous. Meanwhile, Terrace and his wife arrived in America in 1920. He got a job working in his brother-in-law's fur shop, because at first he didn't think he was good enough to make a living as a musician in America. But within three years, he was supporting his growing family playing his clarinet and would go on to become the most acclaimed klezmer in the United States. his career he made hundreds of recordings on labels such as Columbia and RCA Victor. He frequently played for Yiddish theater, resorts, social clubs, vaudeville and movie theaters, and of course countless weddings and other Jewish communal events. The emergence of a new technology called radio allowed Terrace and other klezmer to reach a broader audience. By the end of the 1920s, Jewish radio programming and Yiddish music were being heard on several major radio stations in the New York area. During the harsh depression years, Terrace worked many different venues, including in resort hotels in the Catskill Mountains. The area came to be known as the Borscht Belt because klezmer and Yiddish swing were so popular there. By the end of the 1930s, Dave Terrace had become known throughout the Yiddish theater and klezmer world as the best and most reliable clarinetist. When World War II broke out, he did another army stint. He was commissioned by the National Guard of New York to lead its military band. 
But the end of the war brought with it the end of the big band era and the beginning of a new American music scene. Despite that, Terrace remained one of the few musicians to still record and play actively in the niche he had carved out for himself, gigs in the American Jewish community and as a session musician, recording, radio, and teaching music. His audience was dwindling, however. The trauma of the Holocaust turned survivors and their descendants away from the painful memories and associations of their East European roots. With the birth of the new state of Israel in 1948, American Jews still in touch with their roots began to identify with a more modern Israeli culture. But in the 1970s, Dave Terrace was rediscovered by musicians and researchers Andy Statman and Walter Zev Feldman. In 1978, they organized a tour featuring Terrace and other klezmorum and Yiddish singers. The project also produced a studio recording titled Music for the Traditional Jewish Wedding. This would be Terrace's last studio effort. The tour was a huge hit with seniors who recalled the heyday of Klezmer. But it also attracted a smaller crowd of young musicians who would form the nucleus of a revival of Yiddish culture. In 1984, Dave Terrace was honored by the National Endowment of the Arts with a National Heritage Fellowship. He died on February 12, 1989, in Oceanside, Nassau County, New York, leaving a daughter, a son, and seven grandchildren. His great-granddaughter, Stephanie Terrace, is now the keeper of the family Klezmer legacy. Dave Terrace influenced several generations of Klezmer musicians and will no doubt continue to influence generations to come. Dave Terrace, The King of Klezmer, by Yale Strom, is available at Amazon and other booksellers. Musical excerpts you heard were all recordings by Dave Terrace. Apologies for my Yiddish pronunciation. We began and ended with Chusen Kala Mazel Tov, a traditional Jewish wedding march. Then Zefki Ich Bin Deiner Scher, a couple's set dance similar to a quadrille or square dance. Galatis, grandfather's song. Frelex, another traditional Jewish dance. The word means happy, and this song was titled Freilachs Veseli. A Pastuch's Cholem, or A Shepherd's Dream, from his 1978 recording, Music for the Traditional Jewish Wedding. You can find the music of Dave Terrace also on Amazon and on iTunes. I'm Pavnina, producer and host of Nasholos Ukrainian Roots Radio. Thanks for listening. Until next time, Shalom. Ukrainian Jewish Heritage is brought to you by the Ukrainian Jewish Encounter, based in Toronto, Ontario. To find out more about their work, visit their website and follow them on Facebook and Twitter. Transcripts and audio files of this and earlier broadcasts of Ukrainian Jewish Heritage are available at their website, ukrainianjewishencounter.org, as well as at the Nasholos website, www.nasholos.com.
And from Toronto, Ontario, that was uh, none other than Ron Kahoot and Buria channeling a little bit of Dave Terrace and probably Benny Goodman as well there. And uh, I did notice that Dave Terrace was uh, certainly, or sorry, that Ron Kahoot was one to um, really incorporate that kind of that klezmer- klezmerish um element into his music and very popular and went on to many other um, uh, performers as well. Other groups uh, incorporated that and uh, there is a quite a bit of klezmer element in uh, Ukrainian Canadian folk music as well. Again, that was Ron Kahoot and Buria with uh, his klezmer version of Tej Menapid Manula, Oh, What Will I Do? Цього дня не було з вами повинна. Нагадую, ви слухаєте радіо програму «Наш Голос», радіо «Нашого Кориня». Залишайтеся з нами наступного дня. Далі передаю мікрофону Оксані. Запрошую послухати трохи про історію і традиції розповість Оксана. І більш чудовою української музики. Але перед тим я хочу залишити вас такими словами мудрості. Не ділес зі своїм думками, як вона ще в практиці не бувала. And our proverb of the week translates as, don't express your ideas if you haven't tried them out yourself. And pretty good advice all around there. Well, my time with you is about up, so we have one last toe tapper for you, and it is by Jaden Chornoboy of Steinbeck, Manitoba, and the Tattoo Polka. And that brings us to the end of the first hour of Nash Holos Ukrainian Roots Radio here on CHLY 101.7 FM in Nanaimo. Please stay with us as Oksana takes over the microphone to host the next hour. Meanwhile, please join me here again next Wednesday from 11 a.m. till 12 noon. And until then, do stay in touch with both Oksana and me via our Facebook page and Twitter. And make sure to visit the Nash Holos website for podcast links, audio archives, transcripts, and more. And that's www.nashholos.com. So stay tuned next for the Nash Holos Ukrainian Hour with Oksana, followed by Wellness Wednesday to learn how to be healthy naturally. And at 2 p.m., join Gord Bibby for two hours of great oldies on Groovin' with Bibby G. I'm Paulina. Thanks so much for listening. Do Zusrichi. Zusrichi.